a function f from a to b has a property that each element of a has been assigned to exactly one element of b. So now let's take this definition and let's figure out why the following functions are why this the following f's are not functions. So let's say f of x is 1 over x. Well, we're looking at here f to go from r to r. So if I draw this graph, it's going to look something like this. We know that at x equals 0, there's going to be a vertical asymptote. So the function is undefined at 0. So not every element of A gets mapped to one element of B. So this is not a function. Similarly, if we look at the function square root of x, that looks like this. We know that the square root of x is not defined for any negative values here. So it's, it's undefined for x less than 0. Therefore, not every element in R here gets mapped to exactly one element in R. Okay, now let's look at another reason why a function cannot be, why f cannot be a function. So let's take a, take a, look, a look at um, f of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. Let's say if we take x equals 0, that means f of 0 plus or minus the square root of 1, which is plus or minus 1. The definition of a function is exactly, we, sorry, each element, so let's say 0 here, has been assigned to exactly one element. Here it's been assigned to two elements. 0 has been assigned to 1 and negative 1. Therefore, this is not a function. Now let's look at whether f is a function from z to r. Let's take f of n is plus or minus n. So can I plug in any, any integer here for n? The answer is yes. Now if I plug in any integer, do I get exactly one element in r? So let's say if I plug in n equals 1. f of 1 then will be plus or minus 1. So 1 gets mapped to 1 and negative 1. Therefore this is not a function. It has to be exactly one element. Let's look at f of n is equal to the square root of n squared plus 1. Can I plug in any integer in for n? The answer is yes, because I take any integer, square it, this whole thing is going to be positive. So that's good. Now, does each element in Z get mapped to exactly one element in R? Well, we know that the square root function looks something like this. And because I'm squaring it, it's going to look something like that. So whether I plug in uh, positive 2 or negative 2, I should get the same result. But the point is that if I plug in any n value, I'm only going to get one output for that value. I'm not going to get two different answers for one input. So this is a function. Now let's look at 1 over the square root of n squared minus 4. Well, uh, here I have a fraction. So if I set the denominator equal to 0, I get n squared equals 4. So n is equal plus or minus 2. This function is undefined at, at, at n equals plus or minus 2. Note that plus or minus 2 is indeed an integer. 
And so not every integer is going to be mapped to a real number. So therefore, this is not a function. Now let's determine whether f is a function from the set of all bit strings to the set of integers. Okay. So let's say f of s is a position of a zero bit in s. Basically what this says is f of s tells you what position zero is in the string. So for example, if I take s to be 0, 1, f of s will tell me what, where does z, what position is 0. Well, it's in the first position. If s equals 0, 0, 1, well, f of s will either be 1 or 2 because there's two zeros here. It's in the first position and the second position. But note that we should only be getting one answer here, okay, because one element should be mapped to another element, to a single element. Here, one element is being mapped to two separate elements. So this is not a function. Now, we can also say if we have a string that is all ones, this is not assigned to an integer because it doesn't contain any zeros. So this will be another reason why it's not a function. Now let f of s be the number of ones in number one bits in s. So this is different than the, the previous problem because the previous problem we're looking for a position, but here we're looking for a number. So let's look at an example. Let's say if I have s equals one, one, zero, f of s will tell me how many ones there are. Well, there's two ones. So there's two conditions we have to meet. One, does every element in s get mapped? The answer is yes, because all we're doing is counting. And you get exactly one answer for f of s. And the answer there is yes, because even if I have, let's say, all zeros, there's no ones. So the f of s will be zero. Okay, you can't have, like when you count, you get that exact answer. You can't say, well, there's two ones and three ones. No. Here you say there's exactly two ones, and you're done. So this would be a function. Now, for part C, let f of s be the smallest integer uh, call it i, such that the ith bit of s is 1 and f of s is equal to 0 when s is empty string. So empty string is just nothing. The string with no bits. Okay. So we want to determine whether this is a function or not. Just so we understand what this means, if, for example, we let s be 0, 1, 1, f of s will be, okay, what is a, what position do we see the first one? Here it's going to be the second position. Okay. What if we have s equals 0, 0, 0, 1? Well, there's only one, one here, and that's in the fourth position. But now what if we have no ones, then that means f of s is undefined. Okay. So because it's undefined when there's no ones here, we say f is not a function. 